and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to heal, transform, and be inspired. We are here at Favali's Trattoria sharing a cup of coffee with pop sensation, George Paris. Walks in with his gaze set on his habit. Every You know, like, at the time, we didn't have all these reality shows and The Voice and all that stuff, so yeah. you had to go through every little step. Um, that was a hard path. Yeah. Right? I, well, it's yeah. the right path, I it think. The, the right um, path. If you yes. want to have a career that's long and that will last uh, through the years, then you need to go through every step that will eventually take you um, to, um, to your audience. So, yeah, I started in Greece. I released my first record there and then a second one, and then... Uh, Little by little, I started traveling outside of my country, and um, I'm here today. <laughs> Fantastic. And you just released your album. I can't wait to talk about that. Oh, Congratulations. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you. So the industry is mm -hmm. a hard industry to be in. I, a lot I, of judgment. Yeah. 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 I, I say that um, nowadays it's become, it's become toxic almost. Mm. Um, That's I think unfortunate. It is unfortunate. On the other, on the other side, you know, We'll never stop doing music. Um, yeah. Music is there for everybody, and we all need music. Um, I think that you know, there's been a huge sh uh, change in the industry in the way that we buy and sell music, in the in the way that people um, function as far as music is concerned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we went from vinyl to CD, from mm -hmm. CD to digital. Mm -hmm. So now, um, you know, my personal issue is that you know in the last few years the, the music industry has been peddling some you know dark waters um, but I I simply do not agree with perpetuating the concept that music has no value that's ah. what that's what um, I'm really against yes. um, and that's what I always say so whether the industry is having good or bad days mm -hmm. what I know for a fact is that people will always need um, artists and music and any form of art and they will always run to music absolutely that's what uh, we've all been doing I will tell you it can change my mood in a heartbeat mm -hmm. it makes me feel emotions yeah so for you you put so much emotion into your music thank you I so try to <laughs> you absolutely do so what really inspires you everything I mean for this new record uh, which is called who I'm meant to be it was the first time that I decided to co-write the entire record because yes. up until now I've been taking songs from other songwriters. I mean, I did a little bit of writing as well, but it was the first time where, um, like you said before, actually, I was coming out of a very long period of uh, where I felt judged and criticized. And at some point I lost um, the keys to my house, if you want. I lost sight of, of what my value as an artist was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I decided that I wanted to write an entire album. I wanted to share specific stories that I had in me with my yeah. audience. Yeah. So inspiration comes out of anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. it comes from your life, it comes from your friends, it comes from your personal life, it comes from what's happening in the world right now. You yeah. know, we're living in a, in a um, weird... Interesting world. Yeah, yes. in, a, in a very yes. interesting world. So, you know, you can be inspired by anything. Yeah. Well, being that you come from so many backgrounds mm -hmm. and you're multilingual mm -hmm. and your albums have been in French and Greek and yeah. Latin and yeah. now English. Yeah. So when you sing in different languages, 
does it evoke different emotions in you? Not necessarily because I grew up exactly how you described it. So, you know, um, there was a, there's a very funny way in the way I grew up. From morning till noon, everything was in Greek. I went to Greek school. All the um, lessons at school were in Greek. My friends were Greek and all that stuff. And as soon as I went back home, everything turned upside down and it was in French. Mm -hmm. um, French music, French books, French TV. At uh, home. At home. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> I grew up shifting from one language to, to the other. I couldn't, I couldn't even you know, utter a whole sentence in one country, in one language. I would start in Greek, then put a word of French, then add a word of English, then finish. So it, it's, it has become a second nature to me. Yes. Um, so, and that's why I think that in music, a language cannot limit an emotion. And I'm, I'm the witness of that. I've seen, you know, I've been in Russia where I sing to them in, in Greek and they're touched by what I have to sing. Or I'm here and I sing to them in French and they're moved by the sentiment of the song. Mm -hmm. I think that if, if the sentiment is true, if the emotion is real, if what, you, what you're singing to them at that specific moment yeah. comes straight from the heart, then the audience will, will receive it. They will, they will feel it. Absolutely. Um, and that is so true in anything. Exactly. To be genuine and mm -hmm. have it come from the heart. Exactly. One of the things that my show is all about is inspiration. And mm -hmm. I'd love for you to share a, an inspiration or some way of inspiring somebody out there that has the dream of doing what you're doing today. Huh. Well, I think that, you know, for young artists, because I'm young but not that young anymore, <laughs> um, you know, what I always tell them is that if you do it because you really really love it and you cannot live without it yeah. then go ahead and do it because you'll be happy even if you sing in front of 20 people mm -hmm. if you do it because there's um you want to see your name in big big red letters or yeah. a magazine cover famous yeah well that's what i i don't get i mean i i see a lot of younger um young artists fueled by the instant gratification of of social media and all that stuff and the fact that they have this pervasive obsession with fame yes. um, and I think that it's wrong I mean don't get me wrong but, um, fame is a great thing um, but it's great when it comes as a result of your job of what you do right and it has to come step by step you have to be ready for it there is really something to be said you know to, to doing that process the step by step exactly. earning your stripes exactly. learning if you get into into anything too quickly I think you're kind of setting yourself up self up for failure and in, even if, if it's not failure it's going to be misery at some point yeah. because once you have this and you're not prepared for it and it's taken away from you mm -hmm. then you're going to be um, not happy at some yeah. point because you you won't have anything else to live with yeah. um, that's why you know and I know that we nowadays everything is so fast with you know the yeah. way we live the the, you, the news are traveling within seconds and all that stuff but Art, believe it or not, it is still um, done the same way it was done 300 years ago. It starts with a piece of paper and mm -hmm. a pen and someone being lonely or someone um, having the need to share something with someone else. Yeah. And it starts with a few words and a few notes. Yeah. So even though the, 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 the way we sell music has changed, the actual um, basis of it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm which means that the basis of fame also hasn't changed. It, it has to come little by little because, you know, somebody actually told me when I was very young, one of the greatest pieces of advice I was given was um, um, being uh, ambitious and ambition is a great weapon, mm -hmm. but you have to read the manual really well before you use it because it could blow up in your, in your face I like and that. you don't want that. Yeah. Um, and that's what I tell a lot of young kids is, Really, if you love it, go ahead and do it, and you'll be fine no matter what. Right. And that's what matters. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. So let's talk about your album, mm -hmm. Who I'm Meant to Be. Mm -hmm. w tell us about the title. <laughs> well, it says it all. Um, who I'm Meant to Be. I chose this title because, you know, when you're my age, I'm, I'm 35, and you do this job, mm -hmm. through all the hardships and all the difficulties, um, there comes a point where you tell yourself it if it's not straight from the heart and if it's not exactly what I want it to be then there's no point in doing it so um, I I chose to do this record um, 
basically because I wanted to put what I am. I wanted to blend the Western ballady pop culture that I have in me, but also I wanted to bring together my Greeky elements, and that's why I used a lot of traditional Greek instruments into that um, beautiful into that music. Um, so, who I'm meant to be is the f it's the first time in a record where I put my entire life. Um, it's what I've been through in the last two or three years: the good and the bad, the the dark and the light, uh, the fun and the non-fun, and um, I'm basically telling you everything, my, my private life, my personal life, my friends, what you've bothers me, yes, uh, what troubles me. Yes, you your Exactly. It's um, and it's also a big thank you note to the bright blue sky for what it's brought to me. I'm, I'm very grateful for what I've been, for where I am and what I've lived so far. Fantastic. And it's in English. Yes. And you have one song in Greek. Yes. It's a bonus track. The last song on the record is in Greek. It's actually a single that I released in Greece a year ago, and wow. um, it has turned out to be one of my, well, two years ago, and it's turned out to be one of my uh, classic songs in my repertoire. And what's the name? It's called Pios Fovate Tin Agapi, which means who's afraid of love. Beautiful. Hopefully nobody. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can be scary, but a beautiful thing. Yeah. When we come back, we will talk about the songs on the album and the stories behind them. Can't resist, but says he's able, and I try to understand how he lost himself right here at home. How many does it take to feel nothing at all? How many does it take till there's nothing to recall? Hello all and welcome back to Wake Up With Marcy. So, I want to talk about some of the songs on the album. Sure. And the first one is How Many Does It Take? Oh. It's a serious one. <laughs> yes. How many does it take to feel nothing at all? How many does it take till there's nothing to recall? It's a very um, serious one, and I want to tell you, it's a beautiful song. Thank you. And truly, truly touched me. So please thank tell you. us about the song and what it's about for you. Well, it's a song about um, addiction. Mm -hmm. It's a song about because um, you know obviously um, when there's an addiction in a house obviously the addicted person is the one going through uh, the main struggle but there's the other side of the coin yes. which is the people you know mm -hmm. living them so this song is about watching someone that you love basically tearing themselves apart piece by piece um, in that everyday struggle that is addiction in that specific song it's about um, alcohol but it could be anything and um, I wrote it one night. I started writing it one night when um, I felt completely alone um, watching someone that I loved um, going through that. And at that moment, you know, I, f I felt like I needed, um, I felt completely lonely and I felt like I needed a, a helping hand. And since there was nobody there, I did what I always do, which is to write something or to sing something. And hoping that you know it would reach out to people and it would serve as a helping hand to others and because um, you know I really think that 
even the most personal story yeah. can become um, anybody anybody's story because yeah. that's what unites us. We're all the same. We're all well, we're, we're all different, but we're all equal. So we all go through the same um, issues. So that's, that's right. what this song is about. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, well, it's. it's it touched me so much, and I watched the video. I love the interpretation through the video. Thank you. Because I myself am almost four years sober. Oh, that's fantastic. So I understand the addiction side, but I also understand being on the other side because yeah. my mother is a really bad alcoholic. Oh. So it, it is, it's prominent in my, in my world. There you go. So a beautiful song, see. and I could see the emotion through it, and it really spoke to me. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank yes. you. Well, that's that was the point. I mean, I've gotten, I've received so many messages by so many people telling me that it yeah. it, it has touched them, and I was actually very surprised um, a few days ago. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg posted about it on her socials, and it came yes. out of the blue. I was so that happy. That is so fantastic. I know, and I was so happy that you know so many people are um, connecting yeah. to the message and you know it's nothing to be ashamed or, or it's nothing to be it's just what it is it's a it's a struggle it's a very it's a disease yeah it and is. it's and it's hard for everyone involved in that it um, is. and sometimes we, for, we actually forget that yeah there's the other side which is the person the people around someone who has an addiction and it's, and it's and very can, hard on them too. It can be very, very hard. It's, it's really hurt me as so much in my life with my mother being an alcoholic and, and like, I don't even know where she is right now. She's oh. out drinking. So it's, I'm it sorry is, to hear it's that. really hard, but thank you. And thank you for the beauty yeah. through your song and, and to touch people and, and breaking down the, the, the walls and the shame and the stigma attached to it. Of course, of course, yeah. there shouldn't be any stigma, and that's why. Well, you know, that's why I never talk about who that so who I wrote that song about because it could be, like you said, it could be about your mother, your father, yeah. your brother, your sister. It could be about anyone. And again, anyone. like you said, it doesn't have to be alcohol. It could be anything. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so of course. So you have another song on the album. She walks on. Um. Yeah. That's. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful song and a beautiful story. Same. Again, so touching. She walks on, holds tight to her only possession, a promise to survive. She walks on, and she sees in every reflection all those left behind. Well, it was, it's a song about um, Maya, a 10 year old girl that I met. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, we had a huge wave of Syrian refugees um, coming to Greece and whenever I had the time I would go to the refugee camps and give them food and meet with kids and all that Wonderful. stuff um, and one day I met this little gorgeous little girl um, she was 10 or 11 or whatever she was and um, she spoke a few words in French to me and she asked me to um, sing her a song somebody told her I was a singer so I sang for her the, the a lullaby in French that my mom used to sing to me when I was a kid. And um, I was told that um, her father had died in the war and mm -hmm. her mom and her brother had drowned on their way to Greece, so she was left all alone. And um, so, you know, I sang her that song and she smiled at me and gave me a huge hug. Aww. And she looked me in the eyes and at that minute I thought, oh my God, she is the bravest yeah. person on earth. She mm -hmm. she really is. So I was I was mesmerized by how a child who's still innocent, you know, can find hope into yeah. any situation. And Absolutely. that's why I wrote. I promised her I would write a song for her, and yes. I did. So yeah, and I I went back to um, play the song for her a few months later when the song was ready. And unfortunately, she wasn't there. I've lost track of her. So I hope that you know one day. She'll listen to it. With your reach? I hope so. I hope that <laughs> someone I will find so. Maya I and hope you guys so. will be reconnected. I hope so. But the, the record is not about sad songs. There, no. there are happy songs there as well. <laughs> so well, <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's just part of emotions. And yeah. these are ones that touched me and have beautiful stories. And oh, I, I, from you. what I can tell, there's a lot of them have beautiful stories. Thank so you. what is your favorite? on the album oh 
oh my god I like them all I yeah. know that's the cliche response but um, I think my favorite one is restart because it's the first song I wrote for this record um, and it's basically a song that I wrote against um, the toxic elements of showbiz mm -hmm. um, because you know like I told you before I I felt so judged and criticized and I was so tired of being told that you know I'm too this I'm too Greek too short too that not yeah. handsome enough not this not blah, 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 blah. and you hear all these things that at some point you lose sight of yeah. what you really are yeah. so I wrote this song thinking that you know I wanted to prove to myself first of all but to everyone around me that you know I was still in command of who I am as an artist and that I was not going to um, leverage this with any um, any anyone's opinion yeah it doesn't matter at the end of the world at Listen. the end of the day and and that's yeah. what connects you to your audience yeah. um, and when they come to you they come to you for who you really are yeah absolutely that is so true yeah. we'll be right back with more from wake up Desperate and stranded Walking with my friendly sorrow Watching illusions Vanishing with my tomorrows Watching illusions Vanishing with my tomorrows Still I remember Deep inside I pictured this old dream I'd saved then So you had a PBS special mm -hmm. that just aired Yes So let's talk about that a little bit sure. And uh, you know, where can we see it? Out so, yeah. uh, so this is actually my second PBS special, my second public television special. The first one was from uh, uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center. That's where we filmed it. Yeah. But this second one, this new one, is very special to me because we filmed it in Greece um, at this gorgeous 2,000-year-old theater mm -hmm. called the Odeon of Herodes Atticus, which is at the foot of the Acropolis. Oh. So basically, when you see it, you'll see the Parthenon, the Acropolis, 5,000 people and the stage so it's a gorgeous setup yeah. it's an open-air theater um, and um, I presented some of those songs some of the new songs there I had a very very special guest the the amazing Tina Arena mm -hmm. Tina is um, Australia's most iconic um, legend she's like the biggest pop diva there ever and um, she sang for the Olympics she sang with Mark Antony she did the the Mask of Zorro, oh, wow. the, the yeah. theme from the movie. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, one of the most beautiful voices on the, on the planet, and she's a very good friend of mine. So she came and joined me on stage. Wonderful. Um, and it's airing across the country um, in quite a few stations. We're doing really well from what I'm, I'm told. So I'm, I'm very so happy. So they're re-airing it. Yes. Yes, OK. Yes, for sure. So Fantastic. you'll catch it in the next few months, for sure. Absolutely. Thank for you sure. so much. So oh, what is you. next for George? Oh, my god. There's uh, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. um, I'm actually recording a new Greek album now um, for my for my country, which will be released in just three four months in okay. September. Uh -huh. um, then I'm gonna go on a small tour in Greece, uh, which is gonna be a very different show because it's gonna be all choreographed and there's setup and there's videos and it's it's a big production. And then 
um, next year I'm going to go on tour uh, around the world. I'm going to do a few shows to actually um, present who I'm meant to be on stage. Um, You'll be here in the States. Yes. Wonderful. I'm going to be doing a few shows here as well. Uh -huh. um, you and better invite me. I will. I <laughs> promise I will. I promise. And then uh, little by little, I start working on the next record, on an Eng next English record. You or ever French, take a break? I don't know. Um, no. Not too much. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I always complain that I need to go on a holiday. And then as soon as three days go by and I'm on holidays, I'm like, I get it. I, I need totally to do something. I, I, I'm I bored now. That. So, yeah. Thank and you, you know I'm young I have to work now uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely well thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for having me you are doing wonderful thank you continued success thank you so much thank you for having me bringing emotion to all of us thank you thank you for listening thank you guys thank you so much for tuning in to wake up that was an amazing show George Paris is so touching his music is amazing if you guys want to check in on Instagram or Facebook, I'm at Wake Up With Marcy. For past shows, please subscribe on YouTube at Wake Up With Marcy. And for current shows, you can go to my website at wakeupwithmarcy.com. All right, guys, remember, be kind and be happy. I'll see you next week.